Hey YouTube, Eastern Europe's finest host by Mike. What's going on, everybody? Yeah, what's going on? I don't. I'm not one to celebrate President's Day. Uh, only president I would probably pay homage to is Abraham Lincoln, just because. <laughs> you know the history. I'm not gonna tell you. Other than that, George Washington and all of all the ones can get what they got. Uh, so anyway. Uh. Well, you know, obviously, welcome to another episode of East New York's Opinions. I, I just gave my opinion on what I think of this day. Um, I do want to pay homage and give a great shout out to such a great um, comic inspiration legend. And um, just like this person is probably like the. Uh, you can, I can't even think of a title for him. But, you know, to Mr. Stanley, this is a man that's like a, a Caucasian man that's well in his 90s. So this man done dealt with a lot of, um, he just seen, I mean, he's a lot of American history, especially New York history. You know, anybody know New York? New York not only was, but still is very racist. They were almost neck and neck with a lot of police brutalities and a lot of crazy shit. Um, now, you know, next to L.A. I mean, you, you had stuff in other towns and, you know, you know, things of that nature, too, but. This is a man that, you know, he respect, you know, he was a, this is a man that respected any and everybody. It doesn't matter what color your skin, where you hail from, whether you were from the Bronx, Queens, or Compton, or whether you were from fucking Cook County, Dade County, um, it didn't matter. You know, he was a person that he looked at individuals. You know, if anybody knows comic history, like me, I'm, I'm a comic book. I read comics. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people don't like me and look at me in a certain, look at me a certain way because, you know, unlike a lot of other, um, you know, brothers up here, you know, guys of African descent, I don't, I don't like the term African American. I, I never did. I don't like any term that I, that I, <sighs> a, a, nut, a, a Caucasian people, you know, like Caucasian people put, I just don't like those terms. All right. You know, I prefer to be called a neg a, a Negro than African American. But anyway, being a person of color ethnic background, African descent, you know, I really, you know, really, really love a lot of comics. The reason why I was, I, I like Fantastic Four, I'm, I'm, I like Avengers too, but I'm, I, well, I think my, my, my next favorite after X-Men will probably be Fantastic Four due to the fact that not only because they're two of the oldest, um, you know, teams in the Marvel Universe, but also because of the diversity they brought. Like, if you look at, um... I mean, if you think about it, there's, there, was, there was always a lot of political gain and a lot of political truth and stuff and hidden agendas, and they'll say propaganda, in early comics. You know, if you look at uh, word, wrong word, um, Red Skull with the Nazi party and all this other jibba-jabba, I mean, you know, comic books really took, like now you have fucking social media and other stuff, you know, um, that, that brings forth things that they didn't allow. Like, now you look at TV shows, they use the word bitch, idiot, you're an ass. You know, you know, they cuss a lot. Now you look at, like, you know, compared to what TV used to be, hell, you look at honeymooners and stuff like that. These are married couples, but they still had separate beds. They used to have twin beds in a room, and they never had them together. They always had them on one side and the other. And when you look now, you see women, you know, you know, showing butt cheeks. Half of them show how you know, they showing everything. They showing you know everything but the kitchen sink. When I say kitchen sink, you know they show everything but the nipples. You know when you look at a lot of TV shows now, like national television now, where you know you see see through gowns, where you see women with thongs on on national television, you know on regular TV networks now. You know this is just how far um, you know systematically we become as uh, a community. And it's funny how then they hide shit like that, but then you look at com you look at countries like Japan where they have parades where they actually um, praise and have parades um, for, you know, the human reproductive system or, um, you know, parts. Like, you know, they uh, they show breasts, vaginas, um, penises and stuff. They have uh, parades uh, once a year in Japan where they actually celebrate this stuff, which you should because that's part of life. You know what I mean? And they say, oh, but the Japanese are weird. This is a land of beauty and culture. This country has no beauty and culture. Only culture it has is putting people down, keeping them bondage and chained up, keeping them um, separated. And our history is the closest thing we have as a culture in this, in this country 
which will probably piss a lot of people off that are not of color, is hip hop culture, or um, you know, urban urban culture, which is fucked up because they take it from us. When they wear it and they use it, it's a okay. But when a person of color uses it, oh, they're ghetto. They're in a gang. You know, it, it's just so fucked up. That's the only culture. That's the, I mean, think about it. That's the only beauty and culture this country has ever gotten or have, and it comes from the fucking black. Community, the ghetto. People are not going to agree, but it, it does. Think about it. What history or what culture does this country really have? I'll wait. The hip hop culture. I don't give a fuck what way you put it. Dance, music. It's it. You know, some people say, "Yeah, but what about rock and roll?" That's not. A, you know I'm saying that's not even a movement. You know what I'm saying? The hip-hop culture is probably the fucking only biggest culture you have in this country. And yeah, of course, it's, it's, this has happened in the last 30-somewhat 30, 30 years. But think about it. Before that, what culture this country really had other than being known for the Wild Wild West and the OK Corrals? That's not a culture. That's genocide. I rest my case. Now, going back to Japan, for instance, you know, these people... Um, is they make it very hard for you to buy a gun, and if you and if they do allow people to buy guns, if you're not in the military or on on their police forces, and you they don't, it's not handguns. It's always a shotgun or something. It's only for home protection. Um, and uh, and look how they treat their country. Look how they treat their people. Look how they treat each other. Yeah, they have yakuza and all that shit there, but and yeah, that country is small. But look at all the shit they go through, and look at what's going on with them now compared to what's going on here. Just goes to show, beauty and culture, and honor, and humanity. It's amazing how this is supposed to be the land of the brave and the home of the free, or the home of the free, the land of the brave. What the fuck you want to call it? And this is more like the home of the hypocrites, the home of the of the colonizers, and the home of the wicked. Because you know, at the end of the day, this how can this country be so great when it was built on so much evil? And you know, history always have a way of of repeating itself when it's not corrected. See, people always pray, they want to pray to this Jesus and other stuff. And it's like, what has he ever done? He couldn't even help nine people. Michaels, the angels, nobody could even help nine people from a little skinny, redheaded, crazy, racist retard. There was no sign. There was nothing, no celestial being. Nothing or nobody helped these nine people get killed out of a church. Let's face it. Everybody, thank you, G. Come on, really? Really? I'm like, yo, I stopped believing in Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy, and all that shit years ago. So I'm not going to sit here and believe in something that we all know that they made up to keep people in line. I mean, how can you be so naive to think that Buddhist, Catholic, Pentecostal, Baptist, is, is a, you know, come on, is a church, there's a God or a church? How do you, how do you even think or know how many, see, humans are so arrogant and stupid that they sit there and think, oh, well, my religion is the right one. My God is the right. It says right in the so-called fucking hypocritical Bible that thou shalt not idolize. But then, you know, you sitting there, you're Catholic, you're sitting there praying and kissing the rosary beads and wearing rosary beads to a fornicator, to somebody that's, I mean, that, how can you sit there and pray and sit there and preach and listen to somebody that has more sin and wickedness in their heart than you do? And then you sit up in church next to people you go to the bathroom and people you already can't stand the way people act here. Then you go home and you're back to the same old way. It's like, come on, people, wake the fuck up. Anyway, moving back to this. When it comes to the comic books and stuff, for instance, um, again, this is my opinion. That's why it's called East New York's Opinions. These are my opinions. It's not from anybody to believe it. It's just my opinions of what I think. I really have to pay homage to... Uh, to uh, Stan Lee because I always loved comic books growing up, toys and comics. Because I always been small, even even I was even when I was like eight nine years old, I knew the government killed JFK. I mean, you know, my conspiracies started way early because I'm a common I'm a common sense guy. I'm a guy who believed and grew up on common sense. So again, a lot of shit is common sense. Okay, so moving on. <laughs> <laughs> you look at X-Men, Fantastic Four, they always talked about how, you know, um, you know, William Stryker, 
the anger and hatred he had. Um, then you had Senator Kelly, who hated mutants. And he was like a lot of the people in the government, like um, a lot of high officials, who was also part of a secret organization on top of being who he was, who was trying to get rid of mutants. You know, and if you think about Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, a lot of people, a lot of this stuff had a lot to do with what was going on in the fucking even early, even early as back as the twenties, the the night, the, the the teens, the twenties, the thirties, the forties. And if you look at a lot of the old stuff, one, you know, some of you like, no, it doesn't make any sense. You got to read and read in between the lines to see that it takes a small individual. The reason why I'm a threat is because I don't look like the average, uh, non-threatening black geek. Like when you think about it, how many? I mean, like me and my friends and family, even other people I know, we we've sat back and thought about this a lot. When you see a lot of Caucasian women with brothers, with guys of color, you always see them with slim, tall, dingy looking brothers. Like brothers who have that that hippie slash Jimi Hendrix look going. They either dress like Lenny Kravitz or they wear clothes that like they, they look like they slept in it for a week. A lot of them have dreads and nose bones. You know, these are none threatening but just funk like 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 funk looking guys. Like guys that are into funk music and stuff like that. You know, you don't see a lot of them with hardcore gangster looking or ghetto looking blacks like myself. You know, what you know, they they're always with non threatening looking men of color. It is what it is. And this is statistically proven. And I'm fine with that. Cause you know, me, I always my opinion, you know, black is beautiful. You know, I've been with Asians, Caucasians, and Hispanic women, but I prefer I, I, I got what I preferred. I'm married to what I preferred. Let's put it that way. You know what I'm saying? I am pro-black, and I prefer my children to have grandkids that keep it as close to my skin tone as possible. Um, and if people feel a certain way about that, it's just my preference. Again, you know, my family, including my uncle who just passed away this past week, they had to escape from the Carolinas up here because of... Uh, Let's just say my family are dis are, are direct. They're not distant. They're direct. They're direct slaves from owners. So I know the history of my family. You know what I'm saying. So I'm not sitting here saying I, I hate white. Nah, never that. I hate everybody equally. Whether you're black, white, Asian, Hispanic, whatever. You like me, I like you. You hate you. They don't like me, I don't like you. I don't like what goes on in this country. I don't like the history of what happened in this country, and I still don't like the history of what's going on with all of us as people. At the end of the day, we're all one nation and one child on the God. Now, when I say God, I mean a higher being. I don't mean a biblical sense. You know, all that other jibber-jabber with Jesus and Allah and the Messiah, all that other bullshit. Buddha or Shiva and all that shit. That's all. That's just all man-made propaganda bullshit. You can't sit here and tell me there's like all these different gods and Zeus and all that not jibber-jabber. Again, this is my opinion. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. And to me, my opinion is common sense because it's my sense and it's my opinion. And I'm going to have my opinion and I'm going to have my uh, my own thoughts. I'm not sitting here attacking a religion or nobody. I'm just sitting here telling it for, telling it for what it is. You know, they have um, proof. You have fuel and fossils and all this fucking scientific proof that all, dinosaurs existed way before Jesus, Moses, and all that. But they don't have any proof that Jesus ever existed or Moses or Noah. I don't have no, no no proof for that. Why? How can you have proof about shit that was made up? Anyway, moving back to this. All this has a lot to do with what I'm saying from the whole video. So this video, I'm not all over the place. It might seem like it because I'm going from one thing to another, but it always leads back to the same. Now, moving back to the Fantastic Four, X-Men, and other shit that started off, that started on um, hitting everything off. You know, Stan Lee is a guy that's in his 90s, and I wish him another 90. I hope this man. I hope this man can still do conventions and shows up until he's 115, or until he decides to retire and finish. You know, uh, I mean, that's some shit that went on between him and Jack Kirby and who knows whoever else. Sometimes, you know, everybody gets dirty in business. I mean, hell, you have people you shared rooms and houses and apartments with, your own family that you know y'all done done some shit to, or, or and vice versa. That's what we we're humans. You know, we make mistakes, we fuck up. You know, but um, this is a man that he. What made Marvel Comics so high end, and it was always neck and neck a lot with uh, DC, which was, you know, really sort of have been called um, um, direct comics. 
and or Detective Comics. Um, and they, they kept changing the name until they just came up with the, uh, you know, with the abbreviated version of just saying DC Comics. So, um, you know, Stan Lee, they had Marvel, and he became, he basically became the mascot. Or I, I guess if you look at Mario and every, or we look at Nintendo, Nintendo has so many mascots. Their top is Mario, then you have uh, um, Zelda or Link. Uh, it just goes on and on. Um, you know, he, he's all of them put together. You know, and Stanley, when you think of Marvel, you think of him. He's the face and the heart of Marvel. And, you know, um, this is a man that, you know, back when the Black Panther Party was eliminated, terminated, assassinated, and assassinated, terminated, same shit, and uh, locked up, incarcerated, and just disbanded because of J. Edgar Hoover and a whole bunch of hunky tonks that did not think black people should have an uprising. And they didn't want there to be an uprising or, or militant groups going to, going against them. You gotta remember something. These are people that were oppressed for thousand for almost fucking not almost a thousand almost a, almost a thousand years now. You know, we think about it. It's been well over four hundred. Now we're going into the five what five hundred. So that's like basically eh, all right, a little less than a thousand. Okay, but anyway, we've suffered way more than any Holocaust. We suffered just as much as almost any and every Native American person in this country. Who the country really belongs to. And this is why so many. I mean, how do you think the Hispanic race came about in, um, you know, Brazil, the Taino Indians, and Puerto Rico, and Costa Rica, and Belize? Look how in, in, in vengeance these guys, these people look. A lot of them have they're people of color, but they're mixed. You know, they have that Native American look. A lot of them are short. And when you think of the pygmy people from Africa and stuff like that, this is how a lot of these people came about. St. Thomas and all these, you know, um, um, Dominica, I mean, you know, um, not Dominican Republic, but Dominica, which is a little land, um, which is, they call them water people. They're on a you know, little coast, the Republic of, Domin of Dominica. So you use a lot of people who look, look Spanish or his, I hate, I hate using the word Spanish, Hispanic, because, you know, when you think about it, all Hispanics are nothing but, you know, black speaking. I mean, they're, 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 <laughs> they're Spaniards. Well, not Spaniards. They have, they, they adapted the Spaniard language. These are still, they're all, they're all people of color. Sometimes you can't tell the difference between a, a regular American person of color and a, um, a Dominican. You know, you look at Haitians and Dominicans, you can't tell the difference. They sit here and everybody would act like they're better than the next group. The only people that really showed a lot of pride to me are, i say, South Americans. Like a lot of South Americans in the Congo areas, um, as well as Haiti. Because Haiti was... They want to kind of lies. Then they won. They, they fought for their freedom. They were the only people of color, of my skin tone, darker and lighter, who won. And they, they won. They won. A, they won a freedom, and they were never slaves. I mean, yeah, the country was like the poorest, worst third world country in 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 human history. But at the end of the day, they were never slaves. They were never bond. I mean, no, they were never put into bondage. Now the same people that they shared the land with, that they helped put land there, are the ones that's now trying to show all this and, and put them in chains and take all they land from, which is DR, which is the same people. We're all the same people, regardless of what fucking creed and or, or what you come from, but this is just how diversely fucked up this 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 land is. You know what I'm saying? And um you know I have to pay homage to um Stan Lee because you know I mean I was telling somebody this a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, you know, this is the first time since I've ever watched a commercial where I've seen just a whole bunch of black kids. Black kids, not a black child. You very, very, very rarely see a fucking child of color. Um, and the only time you see a, his, a, 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 a not a Hispanic, a, a, a Asian kid in a cartoon, I mean, um, in, a, in, in a commercial, normally is if it's a, um, like they're showing, showing off some kind of martial art thing. Or, or, or um, action figure that's gonna be Asian and he's doing martial he or she's doing martial arts. Um there was a couple of Star Wars um there was a couple of Star Wars um cartoons not cartoons commercials excuse me commercials and they had this little Asian kid who was like you know part of you know if you want to do the um you're gonna be part of the light or the dark side and because he had you know then it was a thing I think it was another one the kid that's like the kid did some kind of free free running or parkour thing in, an, in another um, commercial as well. 
That just goes to show how stereotypical society is. And it's fucked up when this is the same society who runs everything. People that run all the movies, music, they're perverted. And they're the same people that their families, most of their families did not survive the Holocaust, which are Jews. And you figure, you know, these people will be the ones that would realize just the anger and the hatred and all this crazy shit. And they're the same ones that bond and put others in chains. But then when shit happens to them, they always want to bring up the Holocaust and, oh, all this Jew bash and Jew hate and shit. But then they are some of the most racist, arrogant motherfuckers out on the face of this planet anyway. Some of you may not agree with it, but I call a spade a spade. You know, which is kind of ironically fucked up and funny when you think about it. Okay, now going back to this, so, you know, it, it's just so hard, it was so hard feeling for me to see a whole bunch of little brothers and sisters in our own first, 2018, and your fucking first toy commercial where all the kids were kids of color. Do you know how emotional and how fucking proud that makes you as a person of color? To see that just a whole bunch of black kids promoting and doing a commercial for a movie. And this is the same company, Marvel's the same company that didn't want to give Stan Lee his creative rights. They was really pushing for him to get rid of this Black Panther thing. You know, and it's just amazing how he stuck by his gun. And nobody wanted to, you know, you know, they, they looked at the Black Panthers as being like the biggest, worst gang in the world. Let me tell you who the fucking worst gang in this country is. They're still the same fucking people that they still have no RICO law. There's no RICO law. There's no answer. There's no fucking gang task force for them. They have gang task force for the disciples, the vice lords, the Crips, the Bloods, the MS-13s, the Nietas. The fucking um, Aryan Nation. But they don't have nothing for the Tea Party, a.k.a. the Ku Klux Klan is the oldest and first motherfucking gang in this country and still going strong. There's no RICO law, nothing for them. You walk down the street with a Black Lives Matter hoodie on your head. You're a target. You could be an Asian kid, a Hispanic kid, a black kid, or even a Caucasian kid walking down the street. You have that hood on. And if you happen to be anything other than dark skin, black, with that hoodie, people look at you like, they're, like you're really fucking crazy. But you can have somebody walking down the street talking about white power, white power, wearing a fucking sheet on their head, knowing that these are the same images, the same people that hung, raped, murdered, and did all types of stuff to people. But then this country figures that black folks... To this day, still don't have any rights. They don't have any rights to anything. So when the Black Black Panther Party was about liberating their people, uprising and lifting their people up, hey, you know what? You have the same rights as a black as a as a, per, as a white person do. You know what? But we're not gonna. We don't want their help. We're not. We don't need their help. We're gonna do for ourselves. They saw that. Oh, all they saw was oh, a whole bunch of fucking angry niggers. Oh my God, they're they're the black version of our clan, and we weren't. You ain't seen no blacks dragging whites out and burning crosses on white lawns and hanging white people and dragging them and ripping them apart with horses and cars, raping them, raping and plumaging and, 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 and killing their women. You didn't see that. This is about a people, and it's funny how everybody always said, go back to, how the fuck can I go back to somewhere I've never been? Let me tell you something. The two races that, that, that have the rights to be on this piece of land, this U.S. soil, are the people that were basically annihilated. And it, some, some of them were so, they've been so raped and their blood been so unpure too that half the time you can't tell the difference between a real Native American and a Caucasian because they don't rape so many, what was left of them. And they took them by force like they took my people by force. But a lot of what's left of the red man and the black man, they actually came together with love and prosperity to help keep their races. Unlike being forced. Blacks have been raped. Killed and conquered and enslaved by the white man. Just like the red man. But then when we came together, we made a beautiful race of people that 
went out all around the Caribbean seas, Costa Ricans, Puerto Ricans. I mean, it goes on and on. But you can't tell El Salvadorians and Mexicans and stuff that because they're looking at, no, 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 no. I, I see me, I'm a reino. Que pasa, hombre? Are you crazy? What the fuck? You, you mad, man? Ah, puta maricón. What the hell, man? Ponyeco, what? They, they, you know, it's crazy. You know, but, you know, what are you going to do? Some people don't know their history. A lot of people don't like me because I'm a straightforward motherfucker. They look at me and say he's an arrogant, cocky asshole. I'm not arrogant. I'm not cocky. I am an asshole. I that that one I give you, but I'm nowhere near cocky and arrogant. I'm just a person who's smart enough to know and read in between the lines and be a leader. Alpha males do er alpha males lead packs. We don't follow. And an alpha male can go out there and go up against a whole pack by themselves and be all right with dying on a battlefield, knowing that he died on a battlefield of his terms, not nobody else's. And a reason why I have to give homage here to Stan Lee because again. Because of him, he kept it for what it was. And this was a man that was big into political game. He was big into thinking every man, woman, and child should be created equally. This is the reason why we look at a lot of the older um, Marvel books. You see that. You will see that every time you look at um, how the X-Men was, uh, how the X-Men were being, um, how do you say, uh, targeted. And how they were being ridiculed and how they were being treated by their government and other humans. Other humans that were different from them. That didn't have that um, that mutant gene in them. As well as the uh, Fantastic Four going into the, um, you know, to the cosmics and, you know, coming back being, um, how I guess you could say, um, having um, cosmic pathogens that, that uh, helped them. It, it saved their lives, but it made them different. You understand? And the Black Panther being that, you know, this is a person, of, you know, it was a, it's a fictional part of uh, Africa, which is a, a continent, not a country. Um, speaking of country, and it's amazing how this is 2018 and, you know, you still have slave, black people being sold as slaves. But people say, oh, they're not, they're not, they're not Americans. Uh, hello, you fucking idiots. You, weren't, you, you, you and your ancestors weren't Americans neither until they were sl sold as slaves and brought over here. So you mean to tell me, I, I guarantee you, any amount of fucking money, if that happened to Israel, that shit would have been killed. That shit would have been dead in the water within hours on the first fucking day. But they're not from Israel. It happened in Libya. It happened all over Africa. What the fuck we care about these fucking spear, these, these spear chuggling, you know, saying dodge spitting niggers. We don't even like the motherfucking niggers right here in this goddamn country. We only use the fucking Jigaboos for playing basketball and put out the next rap video, discouraging and disrespecting their own kind. But it's amazing how people are coming together. All people are coming together for this movie. And this movie is like a real huge stepping stone trophy for people to rise up, to feel good about their heritage and about their people, to where we're not being portrayed as crooked cops trying to get money together to pay off a Russian gang who's about to kill us for us killing somebody else. This is not about us portraying drug dealers and pimps. And it's, you know, a whole bunch of beautiful, strong, sexy ass sisters being bodyguards, kicking ass in movies and a whole bunch of print, a, a prince that had to be up, up risen. And then somebody like, you know, somebody like myself who was militant, who actually felt a certain way about why his people weren't, how do they say, uh, protected by their ancestral land. It's, I mean, it's so much fucking significance in this movie is bananas. I recommend anybody to go see it. And there's no spoiler alerts, obviously. Um, and again, I have to give homage to Stanley because of uh, just how much... The reason why this movie was sold out everywhere is because... This is the first time in history there was a movie about pure blackness. Almost the whole movie was... Uh, it's just... It's a fucking maze. Again, black children promoting the first pure black commercial with black action figures. This is... This is... Oh, just amazing. Simply amazing. Stan Lee, I wish you nothing but the best, man, and love you, and I hope you continue doing more movies. I know this was our most anticipated movie for you. For years, you've been saying that. 
And for me, a person that's real strong and into my faith of, of, of my people, and being a comic guy, I have to say I loved it. Deuces.